Hello, and welcome to My Career in Data, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Doug Kimball at OntoText. With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry-leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launchpad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DVTALKS for 20% off your purchase. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity and this is My Career in Data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management, to understand how they got there and to be talking with people who help make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Today, we are joined by Doug Kimball, the Chief Marketing Officer at Onto Text. And normally, this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest. But in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. Doug, hello and welcome. Hi, Shannon. I'm excited to be here. Um, it's in, it's, I like to flip with the other uh, twist here, not starting off with all about me, because we're going to talk all about me. No, I'm kidding. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited. This is I think I love what you guys are doing. This, this, is, this is an outstanding effort. Thank you so much. We are here to talk about you and, and what and how you got to where you are. So so let's start with that. So where you're the chief marketing officer at Onto Tech. So what is Onto Tech? We are a knowledge graph company. That's probably the shortest version of the answer. If you look at the differences between like a relational database like Access and a knowledge graph, it's about as different as your brain is to a computer chip. You know, it can do knowledge graphs, create relationships, understand data better, help drive analytics. Uh, there's a ton of, ton of things that knowledge graphs do. If you've never seen them before, but if you use Google or if you use IMDB or Uber or things like that, you've used a knowledge graph. So that's what we do. Oh, I love that description. I haven't heard that before. And that's a very, uh, a very good description, very understandable description. Um, I'm trying to make it spin. <laughs> Well, let's talk about that. So you're the the CMO. Right. So what is it you that you do at Onto Text? Uh, if I summed it up, there's two ways I sum it up. My my key my and the team's key focus is on two main things: market awareness. You know, who is on the text, and what do we do? Why do we do it? And then lead, basically demand generation, lead generation. So how do we then say, okay, cool, I want to go buy something from Onto Text because I need their data management and knowledge graph services. So big buckets is what we as a marketing team focus on my overall arching, you know, driving pillars, but my big girl, my big job really is strategy and vision. So bringing in the years of experience I have and saying, let's try this, let's look at it this way. Let's try these plans. Let's try these programs, these channels, uh, different ways of doing things. Uh, and just providing that vision to say, here's the, what we're trying to go after. Here's what we're trying to close from a business standpoint. Who's here's what we want to make people aware and then laying out the plan, I, I've got a great team that, that I work with. So that makes my job a lot easier. Oh, that's amazing. So let's talk about then that experience. So let's back it up quite a bit here. And so, Doug, you know, when you were very young in uh, what in the U.S. we call elementary school, mm -hmm. was this the dream? You're like, I'm going to grow up to be a CMO at a knowledge graph company. Absolutely. I mean, I write it down, but no, I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, if I listened to what my mom told me, I wanted to be an astronaut. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I, I missed something in this whole process of going from astronaut to CMO. But um, you know, the, the, my, you know, my earliest recollections of being an astronaut, probably because, I'm sorry, I'm old, not long after the moon landing. Actually, I was alive during the moon landing. Never mind. I take it. So I think those little things around my mind I remember watching the, the TV. Uh, but, you know, as I grew up, I always found I was very good right. at talking to people and people wanted to talk to me and share and tell their stories and here's my challenges and my problems um so ended up going into psychology and becoming a counselor again counselor cmo we'll come back to that it's fascinating so so you you got your degree in in counseling mm -hmm. yeah i was a professional counselor for seven years i did personal counseling academic counseling my biggest focus was academic but also did career counseling uh, part-time uh so it it, it not only was it 
and a good evolution from being a psychology major, but it was also, it fit me. In other words, I, you know, I, like I said, people like to come to me and ask, hey, you know, not just, hey, Doug, I'm having a bad day, but I'm just, I'm not sure what to do. And mm-hmm. I'm a natural problem solver, but also try to, you know, extract from that and say, well, let's talk about what's really going on before we get to the problem solving. Tell me a little bit about academic counseling. What mm-hmm. is that? So I had the fortune to work with a, basically, I'll call it a startup. It was, it, was, it was a part of the university, an athletic study center. So it was a place where the students, athletes could go to get everything from mentoring, guidance, time management, um, proofreading. We did not do their work. I will completely, 100%, never, never did their work. But we help them to do their work. In other words, sometimes they didn't come in with the best understanding of how to use an education system or how to put a paper together or how to, you know, and they got tutoring. So it was really about, again, enablement, which, again, I keep finding as this key theme of things I've done over my last several years. It was about enablement and support. Um, and we, we grew this, this athletic study center from a very small organization to something that the NCAA schools actually started reaching out to us and recognizing as an interest. So we got brought into things. It was it was a great period of my life. I learned, I learned a ton about project management, about education, about teaching and support. So. Wow, that's very cool. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of people who'd be very envious of that experience. <laughs> it was good. It's, <laughs> yeah. You work with diverse people, diverse populations. Yeah. You know, you, you go from people who, you know, just take, take a student athlete who was number one in their school, in their state, in their region, maybe. And they come into the university being the number one person at XYZ. And now we're the bunch of number ones. It, it, it's a mindset change. And then also, I think it really helped me to understand the need for communication and collaboration even further, because you had to take this person who they they were great. Mm-hmm. But how do you help them understand they're great, like everybody else is in the same level? And how do you turn that greatness into action that gets seen, observed and used? Oh, that's amazing. What a rewarding uh, experience. It was fun. It was fun. So then tell me, um, so you, so what was the transition uh, from counseling? I had an opportunity to go work for the Nielsen company. Um, the, one of my, my, my best friend worked there. And so you should know, because he knew I did a lot. I did, was doing a lot with technology. I was starting my computer lab and I was doing my version of technology. And it's not, you know, I'm not a SQL programmer. But I had gotten the point with what I had done with both counseling and the career counseling. I'd done kind of, I checked all the boxes. This is cool. This is fun. But I felt like there was something more out there. So um, I interviewed for a sales job. Horrible. I did a horrible interview. That's it, why I didn't get into sales right away. Um, it was just, I, yeah. but there's something about the, the guy that something I said, the guy really liked, and he passed me on to a consulting uh, VP there who brought me in for a second interview. I, I did something right there. Um, and so I made the switch, the switch from education to business. And I remember the second week I'm flying back from a training conference, looking out the window going, a planogram and band, brand placement versus cross placement. But like, what have I done? But it's just, but it worked out okay. Yeah, yeah. So just tell me a little bit about that job. Yeah, so I, it, it, they originally, they tried to turn me into a programmer because there was a big, a VBA was huge and uh, we did a lot of customized work for our clients. And so they, you know, they took me through training and they had guys sit with me and I just, I, I, mean, I could write a real basic set of code and just sort of understand it, but I didn't, it just wasn't me. And, but they really, they liked my attitude and everything. So one day my boss said, Hey, I've got a project management job for you at, a, at a, one of our, 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 one of our largest clients, a manufacturer in Chicago. And, you know, I need you to go and kind of take over this project and run it. Like, okay, cool. And, you know, they we're in good shape there. They like us, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. So I walk in and I sit down in the guy's office and say, hi, I'm Doug. I'm here to, you know, take over this project of X, Y, and Z. He says, I don't know who you are. I don't care who you are. I want you and the company out of my building by tomorrow and not to come back. So good, friendly conversation. Oh, um, yeah. I've been, I've been with Nielsen at that point maybe five months. So there's a bit of like, the, you know, the deer in the headlights, holy crap, I'm like, you know. I completely BS my way through the next uh, 10 minutes of the conversation saying, basically, I, I, you know, I'm here to succeed. I'm here to make a difference for the comp- for this company. 
I'm here to, you know, you can kick me out. I'll be back the next day and the next day and the next day. Why well, didn't use that mindset during my sales interview? I don't know why. But I mean, I, on the outside, Mr. Calm, cool, and collected, sweet. On the inside, Hi, yeah. Um, and he looked at me for what, for like an hour and eventually said, okay, you've got one chance. Don't it up. Um, and so I scurried out there. And because I had a great team and I just decided to make it happen, I, I helped to drive that program we delivered to success for both the companies. I became the subject matter expert for it for the company for Nielsen. I helped go out and sell it and product mark market it over the next year or so because I had brought it to I was the guy who knew it all about that particular thing. Because of that success, the company who built the tool for us brought me in as a director of operations because they knew there was an expanding web company. And so I went from Nielsen to this, this web company to be the director of operations and take over a team of, I think I had. 28 people when I joined there about seeing how to manage all that and so just again interesting hopscotch of opportunities so again going going from counseling to business going sorry go ahead no I love that story that that is a story of determination that is a story of believing in yourself and and really taking it forward yeah so there was was some fake it till you make it but yeah um, sure I had a good friend when I joined the company he said you know this is a new world for you, but you've got the ability to make it successful. You just have to take it. Like, yeah. Okay. Nice. Very cool. Uh, so, okay. So, so then, so you, so you, now you're with this new company. Yeah. So, so tell me what you're doing there and what's, what's next. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do it's a bit of a hopscotch from there. So I ran, I, I was the basically, you know, there was, there was, a, there was a three leader. I was one of the three leaders of the company uh, working you know, directly with a founder and the, and the, they had a founder and I brought in all the seasoned CEO and myself are kind of the triumvirate mm-hmm. um, helped to continue to put, put processes in place. I helped write a project management manual. I introduced the concept of product marketing to them uh, channel sales development, a lot of just a why I was, I was a salesperson. I was an operations leader. I was a team manager, restructured the team reporting structure, brought some of the little bit of the little bit of corporate minds that I had into what was, you know, very much typical of the, the dot boom type of stuff, you know, like working 24 hours for one day and then being gone for 18 or sleep, just put some structure around that. Uh, we got, we had a merger and acquisition that I, I still came out on a decent side of no money, but at least I was still in a good position. I wasn't let go. Uh, but at, around that time, the guy, one of the leaders I had worked with at the Nielsen company before was now working for another co- new company based in, I think it was Jersey and had been talking to me for a while, talking to me for a while and trying to recruit me and long story short, went to work for him for, you know, was at that job for year and a half ish yeah so and then then went back to the nielsen company because my job changed and they opened up a a, a opportunity to run the consulting division for i think it was the midwest so yeah that's why my career has been a very puzzling convoluted path that i've been very fortunate though i i I, I, but you know if i look at you know data diversity there it, it started to sink in on me probably halfway through the journey how much i've been involved with or around data from mm-hmm. the, the one company was called UCC net and they looked basically standardized barcode documents and in the communication, the synchronization of all that information, G tens, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. So data, obviously Nielsen, the first time Nielsen, the second time demographic data, firmographic data, personal you know, people, data, product you know, data goes on and on. Yeah. Yeah. So. so then where do you go from there to, uh, to your current job onto text? Uh, so I went from Nielsen, they went through a, a layoff series. I mean, I think I lasted through the fifth one. I got let go there. Um, enjoyed, not at all, being unemployed for a year and a half, which I do not recommend to anybody. Uh, took a job with a supply chain company, again, in sales, uh, based in Chicago. I was there maybe three months before me constantly asking about marketing needs. You know, do we do this? Do we do this? We thought about this. And they basically said, okay, you're not being a sales guy anymore. That's up to like six months. So they made me the director of marketing. Mm-hmm. They had a marketing person, but they were mainly just very one event focused thing. So um, got put as a director of marketing, started to you know, build out a marketing team. It was a small company. We have like four or five people in the marketing team and just continued to build that out and grew. You know, Again, it was a company based in Brazil. So I got to go to Brazil for work, which is really, very cool. Um, yeah. 
especially since my hobby is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So I've been mm -hmm. doing that for almost 15 and a half, 16 years. Wow. Um, that company, they, they did a nice merger, they grew, but then they started to cut back based on some of the leadership in Brazil making some changes. Was unemployed for a little bit, then I went over to JDA, the supply, largest supply chain company now called Blue Yonder. Uh, came on there as a product marketing director, which I loved because I'd been doing product marketing in some forms or fashion over the last couple of years. And I think it was at JDA where I really, I guess really came into my own being. I came up with a concept that hadn't been used before. It was a supply, I called it the supply chain grid and I got adopted throughout the company. I saw it in main stay. It was, it was pretty cool to be a product marketing person and having this impact on a global organization like that. Um, you know, I got to do a lot of fun things and learned a lot. We worked with some really good and really smart people. I still stay in touch with a couple of them. Um, then I went to, that was, I was at the point where my, my boss had left and I wanted to find, you know, I was kind of grow, but I was kind of stuck at the director level. And I really wanted to take a VP title as my next segment. And so I changed jobs for a company that was uh, very interesting, got a VP lot job there. And four to five weeks in, I went, I'm in the wrong company. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was a, it, it didn't take long before I'm like, yay, VP. Ugh. And I don't yeah. mind working hard, but again, um, it was about, it was related to data. It was more about just exchanging transportation data and the signals and everything from ocean vessels to trucks to shipment. It was a fascinating, fascinating company. They're doing, they're doing, they do great things. Just we'll leave the rest of it out. Um, so I was end up being recruited by the guy who I used to work for. I was at JDA to go work mm -hmm. for a master data management company. Hey, we're back. We're even deeper into data now. So I worked in master data management for about four years as started out as VP solution strategy. And basically, in short, basically VP of product and industry marketing. Mm -hmm. We had to change the title for a variety of reasons, but ran a team there. Um, did a lot of thought leadership, a lot of presentations, a couple of podcasts before we even had data diversity. Um, I don't know if you know Scott, uh, the, 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 the data whisperer, Scott Taylor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I've known Scott since the TD Links days when I was back at Nielsen. So we connected and you know, we continue to stay, stay connected. I got to have a lot of really cool experiences. I learned so much when I was there to expand my, my marketing tactics, vision, strategy, how to do things differently, better, faster. Um, so it was, you know, it was, it was a great experience with great people. Learned a lot more about data management. Like, you know, going back to me being in second grade, looking at data management, I learned a ton. So it was a, it was a good, a good process for most of it. More and more companies are considering investing in data literacy education, but still have questions about its value, purpose, and how to get the ball rolling. Introducing the newest monthly webinar series from Dataversity, Elevating Enterprise Data Literacy, where we discuss the landscape of data literacy and answer your burning questions. Learn more about this new series and register for free at dataversity.net. Nice, nice. And, and then, and now you are CMO. Yep, and now I'm CMO and uh, they went through again, a couple, couple of cuts based on marketing. You know, they had to cut budgets across the thing. Um, but fortunately I had a good introduction into the recruiting process that was going on for this, this job, you know, went through, I think it was seven or eight people in part of the process and either they lost their mind or they found the right candidate. I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, so joined, he joined on the text in early November of last year. Congratulations. Yeah. Been pretty cool. That's awesome. I love your story. It's, it's one full of, of triumphs and challenges. That no, you no have, question. congrats on, on, yeah, persevering and, and really just turning it into success. That's amazing. What's helped is having a lot of good leaders and mentors. And mm -hmm. you know, if I give anybody any advice as they go through their career journey is find a or a mentor or more mentors, because even the mentors that might bug you, annoy you and make you really like, oh, why am I, they make you think differently and learn differently and respond differently. Um, I, um, I, I would not be where I am right now without some very good leaders behind me. That's some really great advice. And, and, and let's come back to that here in a, in a minute. Um, so 
at OntoTech, so now you've worked with data, especially um, after working with an MDM company and, and going through that. So what is your definition of data? We love to go in. Um, I've used an example before that has used to drive some of my colleagues nuts because I used it a lot, but it's the difference in my mind between digitization and digitalization. Oh. Okay, so um, uh, I've, I've got, I got my phone. So I take a picture of me, okay? Yeah. I've now created an item of data. Mm -hmm. So I just, I've got, you know, it's, 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 it's an image of me. So it's a, it's, it's unstructured data, but it's data. You mm -hmm. know? If I want to, so I've now, I've now digitized me as a data point, but digital data, digital by itself does nothing. If I then send that picture up to, I don't know, to Google Photos, as an example, now I can potentially digitalize that because, you know, they can scan me and, hey, Doug's in this here, here the connection here, and maybe you look like this person or you get added to Google search index, you know, all of, I've now digitalized my data into something that is being used as, a, as an activity versus just a, hey, it's a great selfie. Um, that's one way I look at data. It, it's 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 inform it's not information. Sorry, information is different. Data is just a piece of something that we then have to apply context, interpretation, inform you know information, a question, a need. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, it's just a picture of me. It's just, it's just a picture. It's nothing until somebody goes, "Hey, we need a profile pic of Doug for or let's do a face matching game and see what you know." Then it becomes useful. I love that. I love that definition. So, and tell me, uh, especially in marketing, I assume you use a lot of data in your daily job. How do you? I rely you on people data? who are really good at using and giving me data. Yes, because I'm, <laughs> I'm not. It's ironic. I mean, I'm you know I'm the guy that's been around data for years. I'm not a heavy analytics person. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm very good at messaging and positioning and spotting patterns and things that don't make sense as part of data. Mm -hmm. But I'm not a data analytics person. I've got a fantastic marketing director who lives for understanding Google Analytics and the details and is not just looking at it and saying, hey, here's something we should change here because of this. Um, we do the same thing with our ABM campaigns, make sure we're analyzing data properly, get the right results. Um, I, I probably do use a lot more data in my thinking than I, than I like to acknowledge because I, I, like, I like to really, like, realize reading is data for yeah. sure reading a sentence and learning about data mesh or data fabric or knowledge graphs or semantic technology or you fill in the blank it's reading so bringing data in in order for me to do things whether it's messaging positioning giving guidance giving vision you know suggesting changes for our product demos so it's so you're making me think i like this I love it too. And I love that you talk about reading because uh, uh, that hasn't been brought up before. And that you're very, that's, that's very true. You're, you're consuming data as you're learning anything. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's great. I give my wife a lot of credit because one day, and I'm this, this is a transition here. One day, we, my, she's listening to me talking about my job for, for, you know, ad nauseum. Um, and I was trying to explain the difference between MDM and knowledge graphs because she understands the pieces we'll talk about. And she said, so MDM is like the letters of the alphabet. And a knowledge graph is like a sentence. Like I, I got really quiet in the car for a while. And she's like, did I get it wrong? I'm like, no, that's really good. And I kind of added to that. It was like, it's like they create the sentence because now it adds context and meaning to the letters. Right. But that truly is how you look at data is you just start off a little something and then oh. it should go from that something into information yeah. and then have an information structured in a way that now you can get some insights out of, or, you know, even just wisdom to say, now I learned something new. So I thought it was a, I actually used it in my briefing documents for an event and people liked it. So it, it was good. That is very good. So having that experience with data and so do you see the importance of data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next 10 years and why? 10 a hard one because of all the changes just in the last nine months that have freaked, people have freaked out about chat GPT and generative AI and LLMs. Um, that said, I, I, I can't see the jobs going down because people who understand how to get to the data, how to interpret the data, how to connect the data, you know, be like data architects, data engineers, uh, 
But I think also data storytellers, the people who can then make sense of the data. You got people who are really, really good at bringing it all together, but they can't tell you what to do with it as a result of. And so people who can take that analytic brain, the what if, and to tell the story about, well, this data means, you know, blah, blah, blah. Here's some suggestions. Here's some guidance. Um, but then also, I think data creatives, I'm not sure that's the right term, but people who can look at what comes out of data and apply an interpretation to that, that, you know, you and I might not think about because we, we think like this and the very people who are very creative and data centric. What if you turn the data like that and you, you know, I have a vision in my head of like when Tony Stark and Iron Man has this big visual thing, he's rotating around and going, oh, look, like that. But that's, that's how I approach a lot of problems. I approach, I look at, I deal with is, okay, what if I look at it from the left-hand side and underneath a bit is like, can I see things a little more clearly? Now I can't do that with data all the time, but there are people who have that ability to truly connect the dots and make sense of it. So long answer, I don't, I think somebody who's got an interest in a data career, their biggest challenge is which part? So, so, so tell me about that. So, um, so what advice then would you give to people looking into a data career? How do they find which part? In data management. Uh, yeah. I, I'm a huge fan of internships, you know, having come from the career counseling world, you know, years ago, internships, um, you know, ride alongs, uh, those kinds of things are very helpful. A ton of resources on the internet, but everything from watching webinars to just to get a sense of, no, that doesn't sound like me. That doesn't sound interesting. Um, changing a mindset that not every job sits behind a desk for eight hours a day. Uh, I think it's a mindset thing. Well, you just you know, just poking around, learning, asking people questions, paying attention to podcasts like you're putting together to say, oh, there's you know, there's a job I didn't even know existed. That to make that hop back, that's how I got into project management. I was back at my in my university job. They needed to install a whole new computer lab, and I was supposed I was taking over the job. And they said, well, we're making a contract. It was a, it was a contract job for the summer. You're the project manager for blah blah blah. I said, project manager. That sounds like what I like to do, but I never knew there was a job or a title like that. I'm like, yeah, cool. That's very, you mentioned before getting uh, mentors. Yeah. How, how have you found your mentors in the, throughout your career? That's another good question. I think I've been a little fortunate in that I've worked, I've had people that I've worked for and with that have been very sharp. And for me, some of it's just come down to, is this person the right feel for what I need to try to learn, where I need to challenge myself? Somebody I will trust to poke at my holes. In other words, Doug, Doug doesn't know this stuff yet. And, you know, hey, Doug, you, you need to add these. People you trust who are not just smart, but good at helping you to become smarter. And that's that's a hard one to easily go, oh, yeah, is that in the phone book? Is it in my... Um, but I think, you know, even just asking people, you know, hey, I'm looking to help me, you know, find somebody who can make me better, smarter at ABM. I mean, I'm thinking my, I'm thinking my world. Uh, I understand how to do, you know, SQL joins more effectively or who's been through this, you know, and start from the beginning, just asking questions, having that bit of boldness that I'm trying and, and you know, positioning that I'm trying to better myself as a, as a playing and you've been in a successful career, a little bit of butter up help me to, to understand things. And so I think people in general are always like, like to help. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. I love that. I love that. And, and I love that you, uh, uh, aren't taking this journey by yourself. You, you've had help along the way. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think anyone can make it on their own. I completely agree. I mean, that's one of the, one of the harder points when you get to being a C level is that it, it's a little harder to get, you know, mentors at that level, not at that level, I'm not saying that right, but, you know, when you're a VP, there's always somebody above you. A CMO, I mean, I got a, I've got a CEO I can talk to, but he's got, you know, he's got the business he's running. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually, I'm trying to get back in touch with my, my, my former CMO because he and I always played well together. Um, mm -hmm. just, you know, just to, hey, here's what I'm thinking about doing. What do you think? No, you're stupid. Don't do this. Thump them in the chest and go on. Um, yeah. but yeah, you know, we've always been good about bouncing ideas off of each other. Um, so yeah, that's again, I need to be vulnerable and say, I'm not always sure what I'm doing. Yeah. I love that. That that's great. Um, and, 
Um, so, and you seem to have followed your passion, like, you know, initially going into counseling because that was a good fit for you, you know, and following passion of, of what's next and really finding something that works for you, finding a company that didn't work for you and, and saying, okay, I need to move. Right. Um, so yeah, that, that's really amazing. Any other advice you give to um, people getting into a career in data management? Yeah, I just, I learned taking the time to learn more. And the reason I really emphasize that is again, when I was at, you know, in the MDM company, we did data management and mm -hmm. I've gone to three or four conferences just this year who are focusing on data management. Well, it's a data analytics conference, it's data management. And yeah. so I, I try to look at the world from how well, I just walked into it. So I just walked into this conference and I, I know I need a data management solution of some kind. That's all I know. And you've got 90 vendors saying, oh, we do data management. I mean, data diversity does data management. Mm -hmm. Is your man? It's so helping to break down what is it that I'm most interested in. As you said earlier, passionate about what is that? What is that of calling to me? Is it you know hands-on coding? Is it interpretation? Just you know taking the time to learn. Absolutely. And do you find that you um, are using all your experiences in your current role, including your your counseling? Uh, yes, definitely. I mean, I, I can, there's, there's times I look at, by the way, I'm getting lightning here. So I'm hoping I don't lose power. That would really be bad. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I think I, I definitely think so. And the, that's one of the things when I got up of counseling into the business, I was like, mm -hmm. asked myself the question is this, how is this going to translate? And it didn't take more than I think a couple of years before I really, really realized that it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. How are you today? What are you here to do? How mm -hmm. can I help you fix your problems? The challenges, solutions, plug it in, you know, what do you think of the challenges you need? And again, getting people to talk and articulate themselves um, and then getting to, you know, here to identify a plan in order to solve that. The only thing I do look back that I find is amusing is, you know, growing up, I was the kid. My mom said, you need to enunciate. You need to slow down. You need to start and stop mumbling. And now for my last, I guess, eight years of jobs, I've been being the guy who's out there talking <laughs> up on stage presenting. I'm doing podcasts and like, I'm the mumbler. Oh, no, you, you've been very well spoken. <laughs> Practice, I guess. Indeed. Well, Doug, this has been great. So, but I would be remiss if I didn't ask uh, if how people, if people were curious about Onto Text and, and, and obtaining a knowledge craft, what, how would they get a hold of Onto Text? The, it does several ways. I, mean, I always, I always suggest our LinkedIn, you know, when LinkedIn location, you know, just Onto Text, you know, on, you know, on the LinkedIn because we post a lot of informational pieces there, case studies, conversations, again, as part of education, um, depending on where they're looking, it just helps them understand what is that particular piece of the world, not just knowledge graphs, but semantic technology, et cetera. Obviously our website, on, you know, ontotext.com. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn, feel free to reach out to me and just ask a question, happy to help out. Um, it's just, it's all about learning. Uh, I love it. Thank you so much. And I'll, we'll get those links from you and get it posted to the podcast page as well. So, Doug, I really enjoyed this conversation. I really Thank love you your so journey. So congratulations on, on where you are and, and the journey Thank you. you've taken. Thank, uh, thanks for the forum to, to share. There's, 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 like I said, there's days I just sit here in amazement going, really? Cool. I, I understand that very much. <laughs> So, well, thank you again so much. And to all of our listeners out there, if you'd like to keep up to date in the latest in podcasts and in the latest in data management education, you may go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks, a podcast brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Thank you.